Praise the Lord. Good to see all the smiling faces here on this Sunday morning to worship together after a long time. Amen. Hope you all enjoyed the Sunday School anniversary. If you have not, it's up on YouTube. And I, again, personally want to thank all the young people that spent countless hours putting that together, all the teachers that spent many hours to gather all those videos from all the kids. Um, it was a great time that was had. If you haven't gotten a chance, please make sure you check that out on YouTube. We've been studying from the book of Acts, um, and we've been focusing on chapter 9 for the last three weeks. So I turn your attention to chapter 9 of Acts. You know, Alan Redpath, a famous British evangelist, pastor, and author, said, when God wants to use someone for an impossible task, task. He takes an impossible man and crushes him. Amen. A.W. Tozer, an American Christian pastor, has been heard saying, it is doubtful when God can, whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. It is doubtful whether God can bless a man on a greatly unless he can hurt him deeply. And the other quote was, when God wants to do an impossible task, he takes an impossible man and crushes him. So we've been studying about Paul. Paul, who was also known as Saul of Tarsus. He was born in Tarsus of Sicilia, uh, Cilicia. And uh, we know that he was uh, getting the papers to go to Damascus to hurt this new and growing vibrant church, uh, the people of the way, the people of the word of Jesus that was taking place in Damascus. And the, we've been speaking about that the last few weeks, how the Lord met him on the road in midday. There was a light that came upon him and he was struck down off his horse and he was on the ground and he was uh, not knowing what was going on. And the people around him also did not know what was going on. And he heard a voice that said, get up and go into Damascus. And we see a, ma a man named Ananias who hears the voice of the Lord. And he says, uh, the Lord tells him, go into the street called Straight. And I have there Saul of Tarsus. And Ananias, appropriately so, wonders, you know, isn't this the same man that is hurting all the Christians? Why is the Lord telling me to go and minister to this man. But I thank the Lord that Ananias listened to the voice of the Lord. And I believe Joe spoke uh, of the word that Ananias said to Saul was that you are a chosen vessel. You're a chosen vessel. And uh, the next version, uh, verse after that verse uh, is uh, what I'll use as my key verse today. Uh, and so that is the, the word that came that said, uh, what am I choosing you for? And uh, let, let's go into that uh, verse right there. Verse. And Ananias went to the house, and we see that uh, the scales fell off his eyes, and there was something that said, you are a chosen vessel for what? A chosen vessel for suffering for my name's sake. That is the verse I like to focus on today. And immediately we see that scales fell from his eyes and he rose and was baptized. Even after having this dramatic experience, I want to speak to the children here. Even after having a dramatic conversion experience, what did Saul need to do next? He needed to get baptized. Um, he needed to obey the word of God. So baptism came next and we see that he... Uh, went and was speaking in the many churches. But uh, there was a message that uh, Ananias had from the Lord that said, you will suffer for my sake. So the message that I have today is uh, about Paul's crucible experience. You might wonder what a crucible is, if you would put up that slide. A crucible is a vessel that is used for, a mel for melting a substance that requires a high degree of heat. It is originally used for metal or glass, 
and it would be put in there and high heat would be placed upon it and it would then become liquid and then it would mold into whatever form that vessel uh, held. It also means a severe test, a place or a situation where concentrated forces interact to cause a change or a development. So Paul, even though he was called and was baptized and initially he was preaching to the Jews uh, there, he had to go through many years of a crucible experience. You know, I find it odd that uh, Dr. Luke, who writes this book, uh, only spent 16 uh, scripture portions, 16 verses, mostly in chapter 9, that talks about the first 17 years of the life of Paul. But those 17 years were important crucible years for the, for the life of Paul. If you go study from Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2, you'll see Paul will give a testimony about these years. And we can piece that together with chapter 9, the few verses that are there. And again in chapter 11, a few verses uh, that we can piece it together that the 17 years, those years that were the crucible years of Paul was very important in the ministry and what he can say later in Romans chapter 8 is all relevant. Um, so let us look at this from chapter 9 first. What, was he, what were the different things he was chosen for? If you would put up that slide. Uh, if you chosen for what? Chosen to suffer. That's the verse I was looking for. Acts chapter 9 verse 16. I will show him how much he is destined to suffer for the sake of my name. Even though you might be chosen, even though you might be part of the elect, even though the Holy Spirit is testifying to you, your spirit, that you are a child of God, did you know that you might be chosen, but you might have to go through many trials, many tribulations? And that is what happened in the life of Paul in chapter 9. If you read between the lines, you'll see that he had to suffer a lot. He had to, be suffer, uh, to, he had to suffer in the midst of Christians as well. We see that both in Damascus and again later, three years later when he goes to Jerusalem as well, the people that were in, uh, there on the day of Pentecost, the people that were uh, anointed on the day of Pentecost started to doubt him as well. We see that they started to uh, wonder and question if this is the same Paul, and they started to question his motives. But before that, in 922, when he was preaching in Damascus, we see that, um, uh, we see that isn't this the Saul who fur furiously hurt the people that were in Jerusalem? And they started uh, to uh, plot to kill him. And from that place, wh what had to happen was he had to be lowered on a basket in order to escape for his life. So he was chosen to be plotted, to, to be plotted against for murder. Um, so yes, you're chosen, Paul, but Ananias said you are chosen to suffer, and that suffering includes ridicule from your fellow brothers, uh, from, from your fellow Christians. It includes ridicule that you have to run away and hide for your life. It also includes ridicule again to run, hide, and escape we see uh, in 9 verse 23 that he was that they were killing, plotting to kill him. And then again in 9 verse 25, we see that he escaped in a basket. You know, it's good to hear about Paul, but also in our lives, if we could put ourselves in that situation. How many times after getting saved, after being baptized, do we go through such intense trials? Intense trials is what makes our Christian walk, our Christian life more sweet. We cannot enjoy the mountaintops unless we go through the valleys. Amen? If we go through the valleys and God puts us through that crucible, even though we are chosen, we go through the various sufferings, we are able to come out uh, on the other end and, and be uh, on fire for God. We see Paul in the latter half of his life, the last 10 years, the lessons he learned as he was going in the wilderness. If we study the, uh, the chronology there, you'll see that the first three years after he was basically banished from Damascus, uh, 
he went into the Arabia. He went into the desert of Arabia for three years. And it's curious that it's three years, just like the other disciples who spent three years with Jesus, he spent three years studying the word after being baptized. And he spent time with Jesus. And he got a degree, uh, in, uh, he got a degree in the desert, I would say, if you want to call it a, a desert degree or DD uh, for those three years uh, in, in the Arabian desert. And then he says for 15 days, he went back to Jerusalem just for 15 days. And he met with Peter there and also James. And after he got there again, he was chosen to suffer. If you go to the next one, the next slide, please. You'll see that he was chosen to be forgotten. See that Barnabas ha had to be the one that went and got him. I thank the Lord for people like Ananias who was not afraid to go up to Paul and tell him this message that you are to suffer, that, that Paul was able to receive it. And for the next 17 years of his life, he was able to endure this intense suffering, this crucible experience. And in the midst of that, not only were there plots to kill him, not only was there ridicule from Christian believers, but there was times when he was now, after those three years in the Arabian desert, it says he went back to, uh, after meeting with Paul and James, he went back for another 14 years back to Syria or Turkey, which is his home. He went back to Tar Tarsus. Imagine being in your 20s and... and uh, you have to move in back with your parents in Tarsus. This is what Paul had to endure. Can you imagine that with me? Paul was a man who was learned more than any other Jewish uh, person. He was in training to be a Pharisee. His parents had high hopes for him in the Jewish faith, and he was being taught under Gamaliel, uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, teachers. And his father was a Pharisee. He was, a Phar he was training to be a Pharisee, and now the Lord comes to him in this uh, daytime light uh, on the road to Damascus and he is now for the next 17 years in hiding. He is now spending time with the Lord and not uh, on Instagram posts or not in the forefront of ministry or not in uh, the various uh, glitz and glamour of uh, ministry. He's not living his best life now. Uh, he is not uh, living uh, the the uh, all-American dream because he is now uh, chosen to be a pastor or chosen to be in ministry. That is the wrong Western image that we get if we follow the culture of today and if we follow the famous Instagram pastors and their wives. And you'll see that that is, that is, the, that is what is put out there. But no, uh, as I said in the initial quotes, if, you, if God wants to use a man, he will break him first. He will uh, uh, have him go through many sufferings. And that is no different here in the life of Paul. We see uh, this uh, happening in many other saints' life. But before I get to that, he was, he was forgotten. He was over there for 14 years in Tarsus. And then Barnabas had to go get him. We see uh, Barnabas remembered him and went and, got, uh, went and got him. He was plotted against again for murder in Jerusalem. He had to be exiled again for 14 years. You see, this is a pattern in the Bible that is over and over and is not just in the life of Paul. And Paul would not get away with it either. If you look at the life of Abraham, the promise came to him at the age of 75 that you would have a son and your generation's would be like the stars of the sky and the sands of the, uh, uh, gr the grains, the sands of the beach or the sands of the sea. And he had to wait 25 years till he was 100 when it seemed impossible that the promise came to, into, into pass. We see that King David was anointed as king, but he had to wait a long 25 years um, and he had to go through a whole lot of trouble. His life was in danger and he had to uh, kill a bear and a lion, which then helped him uh, as training ground for him to defeat Goliath and eventually be anointed as the king. He had to go through a waiting period. Moses 
had, even though he was born and chosen for this, and he did not die and was separated, and he grew up in the palace of the king of Egypt, or the prince, as he grew up as a prince of Egypt, he had to spend 40 years working for his father-in-law. He had to herd sheep, and I wonder if Abraham in that 25 years, Moses in that 40 years, David in that 25 years, or um, we see our master Jesus as he was waiting for his public ministry, uh, obedient even though he knew he had a call. He was under that waiting period until his three and a half year ministry. We see that again in the life of Paul in this 17 years, three plus 14 and I get that number if you go to Galatians chapter 1 and chapter 2 verse 1 and you put those numbers together. There were about 17 years of a gap, 17 years of a waiting period in the life of Paul. And if you ask Paul in those 17 years, Paul, what are you talking about? You asked, uh, you saw that light, but now you are isolated. You are banished. You're back home living with your parents for all of these years Paul, what are you talking about? And you know that calling that Paul had received on that road, he knew who spoke to him. And that calling, he, he knew he was under training, but it doesn't make sense to the human eye that he had to go through this crucible experience. I want to speak to some people here today, especially to the young people. I believe many of you during your crucible experience wonder, where is God? The God who has called you is faithful. Yes, he, he has started a good work in you and he will complete it till the very end. I want you to hold firm to him and know that you will come out through, uh, you will come out refined, you will come out on the other side refined by the fire and this fire is nothing as they break behind you to show that the Lord is your master. He has called you out and by his, by his spirit you are sealed. You are a child of God and I believe this word is for someone who is in that gap, in that period, in that crucible and are wondering, Lord, why? Why? I thought you called me, but why am I going through this? And the Lord is saying, I want to make you a chosen vessel. I want to uh, intensify that heat to mold you into the way that I want you to be. And if Paul did not go through this, he could not write Romans chapter 8. He could not see all of what was ahead. And he could not grow through all the suffering that he ended up going through in his life. Amen. Three years in the Arabian desert. 14 years in Tarsus, 17 years total of waiting in ridicule, isolation, and suffering. Saul, this Hebrew name, which was, uh, means called for or asked for, which was the first king of Israel, he had to be changed from royalty, this big statesman, to a little man, which is the meaning of the name Paul, that he was chosen to suffer. You know, as Malayali Pentecostals, we also have this view sometimes that once we are called, that everything has to be a bed of roses. Everything has to be that the Lord will take care of us. Yes, yes, he will, even through all of the sufferings that we ha will have to go through, uh, the Lord will take care of us. But it, he never promised us a bed of roses. In instead, in man many times in our life, in our Christian walk, we'll have to go through this crucible experience. Amen. So if you're suffering, I want you to have hope. I want you to have hope like Paul did, who suffered through these 17 years and was able to come out and became a great missionary and an apostle to the Gentiles. And he went on missionary journeys and was able to establish many churches in many different places. You know, the example of Paul as it says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, is an example for all of us. Paul's life and pattern of life and the suffering he went through, he said, is a pattern for us 
for us that come 2,000 years later, it is a pattern for us. Yes, we are chosen as a vessel, but we are chosen to suffer. We are chosen to go through ridicule. We're cho chosen to go through isolation, even from our fellow brothers and sisters, even from the people on the day of Pentecost. That we might have to go through many sufferings, uh, murderous threats, many people trying to hurt us, but the Lord is teaching us a lesson through that. You know, there's a Japanese art form. Can you put that up? It's called Kintsukuri. Have you guys heard of that? I think a few of you have. You know, when uh, one of their vessels is damaged or broken, what do we normally do? We throw it out. But here, there's a Japanese art form where this vessel is taken back and they put gold and silver and reattach it together. And they go through this process, and now after this work is done, you'll see an example there on the screen. After this work is done, this vessel becomes about 100 times more uh, costly. It becomes more worthy. It becomes more precious, and now it is put up for display for the world to see. Before, it was just a vessel, and now after all the beautiful cracks it has, and the Holy Spirit working on it, uh, the Holy Spirit working in those places of refining, then it becomes a, a worthy vessel. Amen. You know, as the worship team is coming up, I'm uh, led to uh, go to two verses that came to my mind today. In Luke chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, the Lord Jesus himself said, Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because your reward is great in heaven. So their fathers did to the prophets as well. Amen. I believe that Paul got that lesson uh, when he spent time with the Lord Jesus and he understood that his reward was great. Our Lord Jesus, our master himself told us, Oh, blessed are you when people hate you and when you go through all kinds of evil on account of the Son of Man. When we go through suffering for the name of the gospel of Christ, we are truly blessed and we need to rejoice. You know, I'm led also to go to the book of Romans and I picked out a few verses there, but I want to close with this in reading this. Now remember, who's, re who's saying this? This is Paul, the same Paul who went through all of that ridicule. The, the, the same Paul who had to go through that crucible experience for 17 years before he came out, he said, So then, brothers and sisters, verse 12 of chapter 8 of Romans, it says, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the, the flesh, you will die. But if you, if you by the Spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bear, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we might also be glorified with him. If we want to be glorified with him, we need to be willing to go through the crucible experience and be willing to be suffering with him, carry our cross like our, our Lord Jesus did. And then you will have this future glory, verse 18, for I consider that the sufferings of this present world are not worth comparing with the glory that is yet to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. But not only the creation, but we ourselves, we, ha we have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for, for as we ought. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And verse 28, and we know 
that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Acts, uh, we see that again in Romans 8 verse 31. That, that what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also give him graciously, give us all things? Who shall separate us, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights or depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul was only able to say this after going through this crucible experience. To that person that is hearing my voice today, if you're going through what doesn't make sense to you to the human eye, and you are in the Lord and your spirit is being witnessed by the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God, I, I, I urge you, as Paul did, hang in there. And, the, and he is refining you. He is preparing you for something far greater do not give up in the midst of your trial and your tribulation. Do not give up in the midst of your refining. Do not give up in the midst of the, your crucible experience because as that Japanese art form, Kutsukori, he is making you into a far more expensive vessel, something that is far more worthy. Believe in him, trust in him. May God bless you with these words.